Hey guys, it's Mark from North of Seven Outdoors. Welcome back to day number two. Um, again, got down to like, I don't know, what, six degrees Canadian, which would be like 40 degrees Fahrenheit, uh, right? A few degrees above freezing. Um, the water temperature is like 69 or something. So, I mean, three weeks ago it was 80. So, yesterday for day one, I should have gone to the spot first, I think turns out we have the same scenario which is a super super cold night water temperature drops and you see the steam coming off the water so we're going after smallies got a tube jig on there's a ned rig tied on and a swim bait tied on Oh, what we need. Well, that sucked. Yeah, unfortunately, um, when you're fishing a tournament, you can't afford to lose that type of fish at all. That's probably a kicker caliber. That wasn't no taking out line slowly. That was a big fish taking a big run. I thought I broke my line. Turned out I just popped the tube jig on there. It was a very cold morning. Was going after smallies because the temperature outside was, you know, like six degrees Celsius. There's a little lay down there. I caught one largey when I was fishing for a smallie. So I'm like, ah, right, you know what? I'll throw a tube jig next to this lay down in deep water. When's the last time I've thrown a tube jig? Potentially it paid off, but didn't land the fish, unfortunately. So I don't know how big that fish was. Let's say a high three, three and three quarters at the very least. You know, I'm not saying it was a super five pound you know, monster large mouth. It could have been, you know, that was a big run. And it wasn't slowing down, it just popped the popped the hook. So let's play that little clip again. Heartbreaking moment on the tournament. Day number two for me. Like you're at two pounds. I'll give you that. I give you that one. So I hooked into that guy. Um, basically, after losing that big fish, my mind was jumbled in the sense where it was like, what do I do? You know, I wasn't fishing in the moment. I was fishing back at that giant fish I lost on there. So that clip right there was me hooking into a bigger fish 
And a new part of the lake, you know, there's very few spots on West Macoon I haven't fished. And that was a little cove that I actually hadn't gotten around to ever fishing before. I don't think I've fished it before. Hooked into a good, that was a three pound largemouth. I thought I wasn't filming, happens all the time. You hook into a big one, you hit the power button. Turns out I was filming, so I turned it off. Landed that three pound largemouth. I thought it was like three and a half by weight. It was like 3.10. Uh, so not as big as I thought it was. And then I landed this fish. All right, guys, this is a good one too. I can, can't see him, he's been rolling. I don't know if I can knock that out. That out. Might be small, you can't see him. Yeah, he's small, but he's at least a pound now. Well, maybe not. Maybe he's just a small, small. Okay, whatever. You gotta be half decent. Put you in with the big guy. Okay. So this is where things get absolutely crazy. So I see this little dock there. Not all docks are created equal. This one's blocked from the wind. It's got a little outreach of a rock arm coming out to block it from the wind. It's got a little lily pad. The most important thing I find for dock fishing, I'm not an expert by any means, but I watched a tactical bassin video a couple days about it ago about it. And they didn't even mention dilapidated docks. I was like, if someone if if docks look like people are walking on them like every couple hours, I I'll fish them, but I mean I'm not excited for him. This was a dock that looked like people didn't use it very often. So I pitched a Sanko in there and this is what happened. Now I switched to the YOLO tech so you guys get the third person view, but I don't think it really does justice. So I flipped it in there, perfect, you know, cast under the dock, not, you know, in front of the dock, under the dock. Uh, on a wacky worm, the line went taut and the fish started going to that little, to the right, to the little wee bed and just snapped my line. And I was like, what the hell? Like, that really set me off. And it's here's why it set me off. I just retied that. It was brand new, 15 pound fluorocarbon, and it broke me off. And I was like, it didn't break me off of the leader. I tied the leader on. The leader line was still there. I always wet my line when I cinched down the leader line, anyways, even though it didn't break there. And when I tie on the hook, I wet down the line so that there's no friction burn going into the hook. That fish, way, way, way bigger than the one I lost on the tree. That one very likely was over five and very likely was, well, could have been a personal best, right? Monster fish. Even though the footage doesn't do that one justice, way bigger than the one I lost earlier on the tree. So here I'm, I'm like, holy crap, I just lost nine pounds of fish between two fish. I'm like, holy, like this does not happen to me. I'm like, oh my God. I was freaking out. I was definitely on tell. I was like, ugh. So then I'm like, all right, I need to take another 10 minute run down to the south end of the lake and fish there, you know, and try and get something happening. I was just, I don't even think I was thinking clearly about anything. So I tied a jig on and was like, all right, I gotta pull some big fish out of here. And, uh,. Yeah, so here's some clips from that. Are you in the running? Right not.
I got that good one. Uh, I thought it was like two and a half. It was actually closer to three. So I had three in the live well. I had uh, like two three pounders and a one and a half. So I figured like I had about seven and a half pounds. And you know, I only weighed in eight pounds a day before with five fish. But I'm like, I lost nine pounds there. I would say at least eight and a half conservatively. So I mean, I should have 16 pounds. For one person on that lake, I'm like, that's a pretty crazy day. Like, I really messed things up. Uh, so I'm just, I'm like, all right, well, let's fish the stretch where I got those key fish in the last moments. Try and get a limit out here. Squeak in 10 pounds now. Um, hoping to get 10 pounds. And I'm like, all right, that will squeak me into, like, top third of the field. Uh, no way will I get money, but I was like, holy. Like, I still wasn't thinking clearly. I was very upset with losing two monster fish. You just that just can't happen to you and expect to have a good day. It just really can't. On you know, a club type level, if you're an elite series guy, you have enough skill sets to put yourself into more opportunities than I do. Well, I only weighed in three fish. Um, so fine line there between sixteen plus pound bag and the bag I ended up weighing in was seven and uh, seven three zero, so I mean, you know, about seven, just over seven and a quarter pounds for three fish, uh, which was still bigger than I think. There's like two people that weighed in five bag limits, and my three fish were still bigger than their five. Um, unfortunate day on the water for sure. I really really regret that. I gotta go back to that lake. Even though I don't think there's another term on that lake, I really gotta go back to that lake and sack them up uh, in September. So what did I learn from tournament fishing? Uh, fishing at two-day tournament. And this is a really key one that I personally never really thought of. Uh, I've been talking about timing a lot and location, but I've been talking about timing a lot where I feel like I'm not there at the right time. The people that won, I'm in the right area. Make no mistake about that. I'm in the right area where people are winning these tournaments. I understand what a good area is. What I think I was doing wrong, and I have been doing wrong in tournament fishing, um, hitting the same spot five or six or seven times, you know, fishing it every hour and a half of the day. If you feel like there's a stretch of area that is going to give you key big fish in a tournament, I think I was just hitting it once. Sometimes I thought, you know, maybe I go back, maybe I hit twice, but I saw the boats that were coming in there. And the same boats that won that tournament or placed them where it kept going back and going back and going and we're not talking about going back twice we're talking about going back four or five times i mean i wouldn't be surprised if they burned 80 liters of gas which is kind of ironic because 80 liters of gas probably is the payout for winning the tournament so i mean you're not really ahead but you get bragging rights right so that's what i learned hit the same spot a lot in a tournament so i'm gonna start doing that well guys, it looks like that was it for tournaments. There might be one more in West McCoon or the Home Lake, but I don't know if they're going to pan out or not. So far they're not. You never know in a couple weeks someone might be like, alright, we're going to run one more tournament in this series. That's just the way things go. Learn so much about that two-day tournament, about how to fish tournaments. Um, thank you guys for watching. Uh, coming up uh, this weekend we fished a new lake I've never been to before. I hope you guys enjoyed that tournament video. And uh, yeah, I'll be exploring a big name lake that I've never been to before. Coming up in the next video, thank you guys for watching and take care.